This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If you're interested in learning web development, iOS, or UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12 week design and development boot camp intended to get you a full time position in the industry. To learn more, visit devmountain.com or click the link in the description below. Hey, what's going on, guys? So, in this video, we're going to build a Python web app. We're actually going to deploy it as well to Heroku. And it's a feedback application for a Lexus dealership. Of course, you can use whatever you want. You could, it could be a completely different form. Basically, it's going to show you how to have a form that goes to a database. Also, it's going to send an email. Um, and we're going to use MailTrap.io, which is a great service for development. Basically, it gives you a place for your application to send emails before you go and actually create, you know, an email client for. Uh, you know, send mail or whatever you might use in production. So it's a it's a great service for development. You do have to create an account, but it is free and um, you just need to basically plug these parameters into your application, which we'll be doing. You also need Postgres. We're going to be using PostgreSQL for our database. Uh, so you just need to download it. So if you're on Windows, you click here, Linux. I'm on a Mac, so I would go here and then download the installer and grab the latest version. And once you do that, once you install it, you'll have Postgres on your system. You'll also have PG admin, which I have running here, which is basically just a way to admin your databases. Um, so we'll, we'll get to this later on. But those are the two things you're going to want to do. Uh, well, actually, three things. You also want to create uh, an account at Heroku if you're going to deploy this. And you can see I have my Heroku Postgres database. I've never showed you guys in a video how to deploy a Python app to Heroku. So even just that part of the video is going to be beneficial to you. Uh, and like I said, we'll be using the Flask framework. So that's that's pretty much what's going to go into this. So just to show you how this works, we can put a name in here. Let's just say Jack Smith. So customer name. Let's say we just bought a Lexus. We dealt with, I don't know, Karen Swanson. And she did great, so we'll give her a 10. And we'll just say Karen was very helpful. And then once we click submit, it's going to immediately take us to a thank you page or a success page. But what happened was that data that we just submitted went to the Postgres database, which is our Heroku Postgres. In this case, we're going to start off local, but then once we deploy, we'll create a, a, a production database. And then it also sent an email to MailTrap, as you can see right here, Lexus feedback. If I click on that, we get the feedback submission and the customer dealer rating and comments. Okay, so this project is going to show you how to create a web app with Python and Flask that will connect to a database, submit form data, whatever data you want, and also send an email through Python um, using SMTP, using MailTrap. And obviously you could switch that out with something like send mail or, or whatever you want to use. Um, so it's going to teach you quite a bit and how to deploy to Heroku, which I've never made a video uh, showing you how to deploy a Python app. So it should be pretty interesting. I would suggest following along. So let's get started. I'm going to jump into VS Code and I just have a, an empty folder called feedback app and I'm just going to open up my terminal. So make sure you have Python 3 installed. If you don't just go to Python.org and download and install it. And we need to create a virtual environment. We're going to use pip env for that. So you want to install that with the pip package manager. So pip install pip env. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to run that. But that will that will allow us to create a virtual environment so that when we install packages for our application, they'll all get installed on our virtual environment instead of on the global system. So to run the virtual environment, we simply say pip env shell. Okay, and you can see launching virtual environment gives you the path and then it creates this pip env file which will store all of our packages also has the Python version, which you can see is version three. So if I do Python dash dash version, I mean, I have 3.70. I think the latest is 3.74, but I should be fine. All right, so I'm just going to clear that up and, and to get out of the virtual environment, you can just do exit, but uh, I'm not going to run that. So I think what I want to do now is just install all the packages we need just to get that out of the way. If you have any issues, you can, you know, check out the error message or whatever. But to install packages, we use pip env install and let's install Flask first, which is our web framework. And you'll see it gets added here. It's just like a package.json for Node.js. 
Um, then we'll do pipian v install and we're going to need this psycho pg which is p s y c o p g 2 and this is a database adapter we need this in order to work with um, uh, postgres now sometimes this gives at least for me on some certain systems it gives me issues so i'm also going to install psycho pg 2 dash binary just in case all right and then we also want to install um, uh, sql alchemy which is kind of like a abstract layer to work with our database similar to something like mongoose or sqlis or sqlis whatever you want to call it so we're going to do pip env install and we're installing it as a flask extension so flask dash sql alchemy and it'll allow us to create database models and stuff like that. And then let's see, the last thing for now is going to be Unicorn. So G Unicorn, which is uh, like an HTTP server. We need this for when we deploy to Heroku. And I think that should be it. Now, I'm going to, since I'm using VS Code, I'm going to do a Shift, uh, Shift Command P or Shift Control P. And you want to just type in Python and then select interpreter and make sure you have the right interpreter with which in my case is this right here feedback app. Okay, so we're going to make sure we select that. Okay, and we should be all set for for packages, at least for now. It's probably going to prompt us to install PyLint, which is a linter. Uh, we'll deal with that later. But now we have everything installed. So let's create a folder called templates, because the first thing I want to do is create our front end, which is our UI. So templates we are also going to have a folder called static. Now, static is just that it's a static folder where like our CSS and images and stuff go. So I'm going to just drag over my logo, which is this here and my style sheet, which you can get from the, the GitHub repository in the description really simple we just have a reset we have some body styles uh, container some headings message logo and then some form styling to make the form look decent okay and if you want to change some stuff up for the styling you can of course uh, let me just turn that turn my volume down so you don't get that email notification okay so that's static now templates is where our HTML goes or our templates so we're gonna say index HTML we're also gonna have a success.html. Those are the only two pages we need. Index HTML. Let's create a boilerplate here and let's say please um, rate your service and let's link our style sheet, which is one level above in static and style CSS. Okay, and then Let's see in the body, we're going to have a container class and let's have our image at the top, which is going to be dot dot slash static slash logo PNG Oops, one slash and alt say Lexus and then give this a class of logo. OK, under that, we're going to have we're actually going to have an, a message output here dynamic message for like if, if they forget to put the the customer name or something like that. So I'm just going to put a comment for now with a to do to put a message here. All right, because these are dynamic templates. And then under that, we're going to have our form and the action is going to go to a route slash submit, which we're going to create with flask. And let's add a method of post. We want this to be a post request. All right. And then what I'm going to do is just paste in each form group or each uh, input one by one. So we have a div with the class of form group H3 for the label and then an input. And this is a text input. Make sure you have the name attribute because that's how we're actually going to grab the data on the back end. OK, so that's the customer name. I'm going to grab the next one, which is the dealer. So another div with the class of form group with a select name of dealer with some options. Then we're going to have the rating, which is just some radio buttons. So name rating value one through 10, 10 is checked. And then the let's see the comments and the submit button. So we have another div with the class of form group 
comments about your experience, name comments, and then our submit button. And that's it. So I'm going to save it. And the success HTML, I'm just going to paste in because that's really simple. So basically we just have our logo and then an H1 and an H2. And to check these out, we can go ahead and I can open with live server or you can just open the HTML file just to see that it looks right. Okay, let's check the success page. All right, good. So we have our front end, our UI done, which is very, very simple. And some of you guys might be saying, well, why, why not use React or something like that? When you have an application like this, it's this simple. There's it's a complete waste of time to use React unless you really you plan on scaling it and you need a really interactive UI. It's just a waste of time, in my opinion. You, you don't need a front end framework for everything. All right, so let's close that those up. So we should be good as far as our templates. Now let's start to deal with Python. So I'm going to create an app.py file, which is going to be our entry point. If you're familiar with Node and Express, it's similar to like an app.js or an index.js. And in here, let's bring in Flask or a couple things from Flask. So we want to import Flask itself. We want to bring in something called render template so that we can render our HTML files and then request to deal with request uh, parameters and things like that. Then we need to initialize our app. We do that by just set, setting it to Flask and then we pass in double underscore name, double underscore. And let's create a route. The way that we do that is we do a decorator of at app dot route and this is going to be for the home page so just slash then we define a method or a function called index or whatever you want and then we're just going to return render template and then pass in index html and it will render that template and then finally for this to run we need to call app dot run but we just want to do this if statement first so if name is equal to double underscore main. So we're just making sure this isn't important. This is actually running and then app dot run. And that should be that should allow us to run our server. Oh, one one more thing I want to do is just set app dot debug uh, to true. Okay, whoops, no semicolon because we're in development and we want the server to keep reloading and stuff like that. So down here, let's run Python app dot pi. And there we go. So it's running on 5000. Let's open that up. And you can see that it's running on 5000 and we get our uh, form. All right. So it's displaying that good. Next thing I want to do is handle the submit or start to handle the submit. So our index page has a form that's making a post request to slash submit. So we need to handle that on our back end. Okay, so let's do app dot route and we want slash submit. That's what we're submitting to. And since it's a post request, we actually have to assign methods and an array of allowed methods, which we want post. And then let's say function or define um, submit. Okay, now. I want to make sure that it's a post request, so I'm going to do an if statement here and we can grab that request object and it has a property called method, which will give us the method that was called. We want to make sure it's post. And then let's get the data, um, the form data and put those into variables. So we'll say customer equals and we can do request dot form and then brackets and whatever the name of that field. So in this case, we want to get this field here, which has the name of customer. So we want to use customer in here. Okay, we have four fields, I believe. And we want, uh, oops, what's the next one? Dealer, dealer, and then this one here, which is rating. Okay, and then we want This one is comments. Okay, so that should get the data from the form. Now I just want to print out this data. So let's print out customer dealer rating comments. 
And then as far as what we want to return, I'm just going to render template and let's render the success page. Okay. So once we make our request, we submit the form, we should get the data, it should print it in the console and then we should render the success page if everything is right. So let's say John Doe dealer we'll do 10 and we'll just say test submit. So it redirects us good. Let's check the console. We get John Doe, Tom Smith, 10 and test. Okay, so we know we're getting that form data. We can comment that out. So next thing I want to do is make sure that the user enters a customer and a dealer. So just do some simple validation. So we'll say if customer is equal to nothing or dealer is equal to nothing, then let's go ahead and return render template, except we want to return index HTML, which is the, the home page. But we want to send along a message okay? with templates. We can send along data. So let's say please enter required fields. Now I'm going to save this and we have to have this message output somewhere in the template. And if you remember, I put this um, this to do right here. So I'm going to replace this. I first want to check to make sure that the me message exists. So let's do if message and we use these percent curly braces and we want to end this if. Okay, and then here I'll do a paragraph with the class of message and we use our double curly brace syntax uh, similar to what you would do in like view or angular and then let's put our message and we can ask add these pipe characters and then I'm going to put safe, which just is a little bit of security for output. So let's save that and let's try out that validation. So if I clear this up clear that up and there we go. We get please enter required fields. Okay, so now that we've done that, I think we're ready to start to implement the database. So let's close that up and let's go back to our app.py and we need to bring in uh, SQL Alchemy. Okay, SQL Alchemy. Um, now we need to define our database URI or database location. So I'm going to head into PG admin 4 and and when you install Postgres locally, you'll get this um, over here. You can see database is one. I'm going to create a new database and I'm just going to call it Lexus and I'm going to use my Postgres user and save. That should create a new database. There we go. So now you can see I have the Lexus database here. If I look in schemas and tables, we don't have any tables yet. We'll add that in a bit. So we have the database. Um, now let's go back to our application here. Now, when we deploy to Heroku, we're going to have a completely different database. So you could just switch it up then. But I'm just going to have a variable called N for environment and set this to dev. And then we'll say if the environment is equal to dev, then we'll have our database else. Then we'll have the production database. Now, another thing that I want to change if we're in development mode or production mode is this here app debug. So I'm going to take that away from there and set that If we're in development mode, set it to true. If we're. Wait a minute. No, that's wrong. If we're in development mode, set it to true else. Set it to false. Okay, and then here we'll put our development database. And the way that we do that is app.config. And this is all in the SQL Alchemy um, documentation. If you want to check that out. But we want to do config. And then the key here is SQL. Alchemy underscore database underscore URI. Okay, and what we want to set this to is Postgres QL. And then the username, which mine, I'm using the root Postgres user. 
colon and then the password, which mine is just one through six at localhost slash and then your database name, which mine is Lexus. Okay, down here we'll have our production database. Actually, I'll just grab this. And for now, I'll just set this to nothing. We'll deal with that later. All right. And then there's one app.config value we want to add or we're going to get a warning in the console and that's SQL alchemy underscore track modifications and we want to set that to false. Okay, or else we're going to get a warning. So that should connect us. Now we need to create a, a database object. So the way that we do that is right here, Oops. right here, we're going to say DB and we're going to set it to SQL Alchemy and just pass in our app. So then we can use that to query our database. Now, the way that SQL Alchemy works is we create models, okay, similar to what you would do with Mongoose or SQLize. So I'm going to create a, a model right here and we do this in the form of a class. You call this whatever you want. I'm going to call it feedback and this is going to extend the DB model. And inside here we can define a table name. Which is going to be. Feedback. Um, and then we want to define our field, so we're going to have an ID and we can use that DB variable and we're going to say DB column. And it's going to be an integer, so DB integer. So we have different types we can use. And this is also going to be the primary key. So we're going to set that to true. Okay, next one is going to be the customer. So DB dot uh, column. And this is going to be a string. So I'm going to do DB dot string, let's say 200 limit. And I want to make this unique. So we'll say unique equals true. And then we have a couple more. Uh, let's see, we can actually get rid of this. So this next one is going to be what the dealer, which will also be a string. So I'll leave that and then call this dealer. And then we have rating. So rating is going to be an integer. We can get rid of unique and Let's see DB dot integer like that. And then this last one is going to be the comments. Comments is going to be the te a text field, which is like a longer field. We don't need to put that in and we don't want this. Okay, so that's those are the fields that we want. So our class or our model also needs a, a constructor or, or I guess an initializer. Uh, so we're going to define double underscore init. Oops. Okay, so if you're familiar with object oriented programming in other languages, this is similar to a constructor. It takes in self, which is like, you know, like the this keyword, and then it takes in all the fields we want, which are customer, all the fields except the ID uh, dealer rating and comments and then we simply want to set self dot customer to the customer that's passed in. Oops, no semicolons and do the same for the others. So dealer. And this is going to be is this rating. And this is going to be uh, comments. Okay, and that's it. So that's our model. I'm going to save this and I just have format on save enabled. That's why I saw that it kind of changed a little bit when I saved. So that's our model. Now we should be able to make queries to our database wherever we want. So let's go back down to the submit. So right now we're just kind of redirecting to success where we haven't done anything with the database. Um, but before we do that, we actually have to uh, we have to create the feedback table and we can actually create that based on our model. All right. So 
I'm going to just stop the server with control C for a second and I'm going to just go into Python. So I'm just going to type Python and from here I'm going to bring in DB. I'm going to say from app. So from our app file, let's import DB and then we can say DB dot create underscore all and some parentheses and that should look at our model. Look at our database and create the table from it, the feedback table. Okay, feedback table with all these fields. So now we can exit from this and we can run our server again. And now we can actually check this through PG admin. So I'm just going to um, let's see, let's refresh our schemas in the Lexus database and go to tables. And there it is feedback. So if we look at feedback and we look at uh, columns, there they are ID, customer, dealer, rating, comments. Okay, so we now have our database. We have our table. We have our app connected to our database. So now we want to be able to make queries and stuff. So in the submit, let's go right above where we render success and Um, let's see. Let's first check to make sure that the customer doesn't already exist because we don't want the same customer to be able to submit more than one feedback. So the way that we can do that is with an if statement. Now when we deal with the database, we use DB and then dot session. Okay, now I want to make a query, so I'm going to do session dot query. We need to pass in our model, which is feedback, and then we can filter. And what I want to do is say feedback. I want to filter where feedback dot customer is equal to the customer variable, which is this, which is where the data comes in. And I want to count that. So dot count. And if that is equal to zero, that means that that customer does not exist. Um, let me just close that up. All right. So that means that the customer does not exist. And that now I want to basically uh, add the data to the database. So the way that we do that is, first of all, create a variable, call it data, and we need to set that to our model, which is feedback. And you can have multiple models, obviously. And in feedback, we're going to have we're going to put in our customer dealer. So this is basically the form data that we want to submit rating comments. Okay, so we have data. Now we need to DB dot session dot add. And we want to add that data. Now that's not going to put it in the database just yet. We need to commit it. So we need to do DB dot session dot commit like that. Now, if if that if all goes well, then we want to return the success. So we, we want to indent this over one. Uh, yeah, we'll indent that over one because once it's added, we want to redirect to success. Now, if this is false, we want to basically re-render the index. So I'll just copy that, put that on the same level as this if. Okay? Uh because basically this will run if this is not true. If this is true, then all this stuff will run. I just want to change the message up to you have already submitted uh submitted feedback. Okay? And that should do it. So let's save that. And let's cross our fingers and try this out. So I'm just going to go back to 5000. Let's say John Doe dealer Tom Smith. We'll give him a 10. We'll say Tom was very helpful. Submit. Okay, so we get redirected. So hopefully it went into the database. Let's go to PG admin and let's go to uh, our feedback table and let's Uh, refresh and now if we go to columns not columns feedback again and we choose view edit data all rows there it is so ID one so it's going to be auto increment it's the primary key John Doe is the customer Tom Smith rating 10 and then a comments all right so we've successfully added data to the database So the next thing I want to do is implement email. Okay, we don't want the data to just go in the database. We also want to send an email. 
So we're going to be using MailTrap for this. So we want to go to MailTrap.io, create an account, and you should see something like this. You'll have a specific username and password. Don't use mine, use your own. And we're going to create a new file to handle the email. So I'm going to create a file called send underscore mail dot pi. All right, so in this uh, Let's see in this email script we're going to bring in uh, a couple things so one is the smtp library smtp lib and we're also going to say from email dot mime dot text we want to import mime text which will allow us to send text and html emails Okay, and let's create a function called send underscore mail and it's going to take in so the data we want to email, which is the customer, the dealer, the rating and the comments. Okay, now there's a few things we need to set here. So port is going to be 2525. Now it depends on the service you're using for email this stuff. This relates to uh, MailTrap. So we want to send the SMTP underscore server, which is SMTP dot mail trap dot IO and then login, which is going to be your password get I'm sorry, your username and then your password, which obviously will be your password. Um, so I'm going to grab mine real quick, which is this, this is my username. Put that in there and password. Grab that. Put that in there. And then I'm going to create a message variable and I'm going to use an F string, which is uh, just an easy way to uh, the heck, easy way to have uh, variables. in my string let's use double quotes here and we can also put html so i'm going to put an h3 and i'm going to say new feedback uh, submission h3 and then let's do a ul you can style this or you know you can create whatever you want here i'm just doing an unordered list so dash li and in here let's do customer colon and since we use an F string we can simply put variables in like this. It's like a template literal in JavaScript. Okay, and I'll just copy this LI and paste it in 2 3 4 more times and the second one is going to be dealer. Dealer and this will be let's see rating rating okay and comments comments okay so that's the message now we have to define some more variables here so the sender email is going to be I'm just going to use email one at example.com obviously you would use your you know your real domain name um, and then receiver Let's do a receiver email and I'm just going to set that to email to at example dot com. Okay, and then we need to create this MSG or you could use whatever I'm going to use MSG and then um, we want to set this equal to mime text. and pass in our actual message that we created above and then the type of email we want, which is going to be HTML. Okay, you can have text or HTML um, and then we need to create MSG subject, which is going to be set to. Uh, let's set that to Lexus feedback and we want to do MSG. And we need to set the from and that's going to be the sender email and then MSG 
two, which is going to be the receiver email. Okay, and then we want to finally send the email and we do that by doing with SMTP lib dot SMTP and we need to pass in the server. So SMTP server, which we defined above as well as the port, which we defined above as server. And then let's take that server object and call login and pass in our login and password and then take server and call send mail and we pass in our sender email our receiver email and then we do this msg dot as underscore string okay and we'll save that now this will be a bit different depending on what service you're using if you're using gmail or send mail whatever um, this will be a little different obviously you know we're using mail trap so we need the specific logins and password and stuff but i believe that's all we need here so make sure that's saved and then we'll go into app.py and let's bring in that function so we're going to say from send mail in port send mail And then we just simply need to call it. So we'll go down after we I mean, it's up to you when you want to call it. I want to do it after it goes into the database. So in our submit right after the commit before we redirect is where I'm going to call it. So send mail. Remember, it takes in the data, the customer, the dealer, the rating and the comments. Okay, and that should do it, hopefully. So now when I submit, it should not only go in the database, but it should also um, send an email to MailTrap. And I just want to show you if I try to do John Doe again, it shouldn't let me because I already did him. So if I submit, you have already submitted feedback. So let's do someone else. We'll do um, Kevin Smith. And we'll say He's dealing with his cousin, Tom Smith, gives him a five just because he has some some issues with him. Uh, Tom was <laughs> very pushy. And submit. Okay, so we got redirected. Let's check the database. So we already have this select um, all from feedback. Let's run this. And there's Kevin Smith. And then if we go to MailTrap, We have a, a message here, Lexus feedback. And if we check it out, we get Kevin Smith as the customer, Tom Smith as the dealer, five rating. Tom was very pushy. <laughs> All right. So we're now sending an email and putting it into the database. And of course, you can apply this to many different situations, many different apps. Uh, so hopefully that that helps you guys out. All right. So I think we're just about ready to deploy. So we have a bunch of steps that we have to go through to be able to do this. All right. Now I'm going to just uh, I'm going to stop my dev server here and you're going to need a Heroku account. Okay, so you want to go to Heroku.com, create an account. You'll see a screen like this with all your apps and obviously you won't have any if you just create an account and then you need the Heroku CLI. So let's say Heroku CLI. And some of you might already have this installed, but it's easy to install Mac OS. You can download the installer. You can use Homebrew Windows. You have an installer and then Linux. You have some methods for different uh, distros. So I already have it installed. Um, and the way that we do this is with Git. So obviously you need Git installed as well. Now I'm going to create, first of all, a file. I'm going to create my dot git ignore file. And basically all I want to put in here is my dot. Actually, I don't have a dot. You might have a dot VS code folder uh, if you use PyLint. So I'm just going to put that in there and then double underscore pi cache that will get created and you don't want to um, you don't want to commit that. So I think that's all we need in there. And then let's initialize a Git repository with Git init. And then we're going to um, 
actually, yeah, we'll just initialize it for now. So we want to create a Heroku app. So if you have the CLI installed, you should be able to do Heroku dash dash version and it will show you your version. I think mine's a little out of date, but then you want to do Heroku login. So press any key to open your browser and you just want to log in. Just click that. And then if we go back, you can see I'm logged in as this email. Okay, so now we want to create a Heroku application by saying Heroku create and then we can name this. So I'm going to call it Lexus feedback uh, and this has to be unique so you won't be able to use that name. And if you don't put a name, it'll just create some weird name for you. But now we have this URL. Now the app is not um, is not deployed yet. We just have the we just basically have it created. So if we go back to my dashboard or you go back to your dashboard and reload, you'll see this Lexus feedback or whatever you called it. Now, before we try to deploy, we need to create a database. Now, a po Postgres is offered as an add on with Heroku and you get a, you get I think you get one free database with the free account, of course. Uh, if you're doing production, then you definitely want to upgrade your Heroku. But let's go back here and let's create uh, a database add on so we can do Heroku uh, add ons colon and we want to do create and then Heroku dash PostgreSQL uh, and then colon. Now this is a basically like a development database or a hobby database. So we want to do hobby dash dev dash dash app and we want to we want to tell it which app we want it to use because you can have more than one app on Heroku. So I want to use Lexus feedback. All right, so let's try and run that. See what happens. Okay, so created an empty database. Uh, let's see, so created this as database URL. Now, in our application, we have our URI for our dev database, but we don't have one for our production. And the way we can get that is simply by doing. Let's clear this up. Let's do Heroku and I'll probably put a maybe I'll create a gist with all these commands so you guys don't get too confused and have to keep, you know, pausing. Um, let's do Heroku config dash dash app and then the name of the app. And it gives us this database URL. So we want to grab that. Okay which is just a long, you know, has a, the username and password. Uh, we want to put that right here for production. Oops, what happened? Did I copy that right? This just need there we go. OK, so that is our production database. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch the environment to prod so that this will now be in effect instead of this uh, and save that. I think that's all we have to do here. So yeah, this stuff will all be the same, all the mail stuff. Um, now, remember when we created uh, we created the table, the feedback table in our database locally, we need to do that um, we need to do that on our remote database as well. So we can actually do Heroku run Python. Actually, sorry, we don't want to do this yet. I'm going to uh, I'm going to exit out of this because we don't have ugh, exit. OK, and the reason I'm not going to do this yet is because we need to import DB from our app file, but we don't have our app file uploaded yet. So we're not going to do that just yet. Uh, let's see. And I'll have I'll, I'm going to create a gist that has all the steps for you guys. Um, one thing we want to do is create a requirements file requirements TXT, which has all of the packages that are needed for this application. And the way that we create that is with pip freeze. 
and then a greater symbol and then requirements and now you can see it created this requirements file um, actually it should be requirements txt let's just rename that dot txt okay so it has you know all the stuff it has some additional things that i have on my in my environment as well um, but now that we've done that let's see the next thing we want to do is create something called the proc file because it has to know heroku it's a it's a it's a SaaS basically or a, or a pass a platform as a service and it needs to know how to run the application so we're going to go ahead and just touch which will just create a file and then proc file so capital p proc file no extension you can even see this has a heroku little icon here and in this proc file we're going to say web colon and we're using unicorn okay remember we installed that back in the beginning and then app and then the file we want to run is our app file so that should run it so we'll save that okay another file we need to create is runtime.txt and we need to basically tell it what version of python to use so let's create a file called runtime.txt and we just simply need to say python dash and then 3.7.2 i believe and you can look this up um, let's see heroku not python heroku runtime.txt should be a docking documentation file right here yeah so python 3.7.2 Oh, we need to do this afterwards this requirements dot text all right so you know what i'll do is just delete my requirements text and just run that again except this time we want to do dot txt okay so now we have that you just want to make sure you have all these files before we attempt our deploy so now what we'll do is add everything to our git repository so we'll say git add all just do it in one line so get add all to our staging area and get commit dash m and for comment we'll just say initial deploy okay so now everything is in the local repository so now we need to push that to heroku but in order to do that we need to add our remote repository so if we go to our application in our dashboard Lex lexus feedback and we go to deploy and you'll see a command like this heroku git remote so we want to just grab that and just go ahead and paste that in so now that's added as our remote repository now we can push to it by just doing git push to heroku and the master branch and hopefully that works And you can see it's installing Python 3.7.2, installing pip. So Heroku is, is, I think, is awesome because we don't have to do all this stuff ourselves on our remote production server. When you use something like DigitalOcean um, or, you know, I don't know, Linode or Vulture, you have to do all this stuff on the server. You know, you have to set up... Um, you know, Nginx and Unicorn, and it's just a pain in the ass. Heroku makes this stuff much easier. It also it installs SQL Lite 3. We're not using that, but it does install it. Okay, proc file declares. So, so far, so good. It's going to look at our pip env file. Just like if you were to deploy a node app, it would look at your uh, package.json and it would install all of your dependencies. Okay, so it looks like everything's okay. So now we can do Heroku open, which will just open up the URL. Okay, now this probably, well, I, it's not going to work because we haven't created the database table yet, but we'll just give it a shot. So if I say John Doe, test 
tests, we're going to get some internal error, most likely. Yeah. OK, so uh, it might have sent the email, but I'm not sure. Let's see. No, it didn't. Let's just delete this old email here. OK, so the reason that that didn't work is because we don't have the table created. So now let's go back into our terminal here and do what we'll do what I did before Heroku run Python. OK, now we have our files deployed, so we have that app.py file on the server. So we can now do from app import db and then db dot create underscore all. OK, and then exit. Now I can actually log into my database, my remote database from here as well. So if I do Heroku uh, PG colon PSQL dash dash app and then my name, which is Lexus feedback. I'm actually logged into my remote database and I can do like select all from feedback and you can see I have zero rows. Now let's try this again. Let's just reload this and let's say John Doe. Karen Swanson will give her a 10. Karen is great and submit and we got redirected. Now I'm going to go back to my whoops and go back to my VS Code terminal and run that select all from feedback. And there it is. So we now have that data in our database on our server and we should have got the email. Let's check that out. We'll go to mail trap. There it is. John Doe, Karen Swanson. So we now have a fully deployed app to Heroku, a Python app, a Flask application that uses uh, a database. So hopefully you learn quite a bit in this in this little tutorial, um, you know, how to submit data, how to uh, deploy it, how to send emails. I mean, it's a very simple little application, but there's a lot that you can build from this. Um, one thing that I might suggest and, and I always suggest expanding on tutorials when you watch a tutorial or a course. I would suggest that you implement authentication so that you can have a page where you log in and you see all the submissions and you should have a, a, a good foundation on how to do that, you know, just by what we've done here. Also, I have a, a flask series where I show you how to use authentication or or implement authentication. So I think taking that series in combination with this video, I think that you could do that and that that'd be a really good challenge for you. All right. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this um, again. I'll have the the code in the description. I'll also try to create a little gist that you can follow as well um, for the commands and stuff. All right. Thanks for watching. If you like this, please leave a like. I appreciate it. Follow me on social media if you're interested. Uh, and that's it. Thanks for watching.